CFC2 has been tremendously productive in finding and identifying new biomarkers for glaucoma. So these range from visual stimulation experiments that allow us to tap into the specific sets of retinal ganglion cells that are most vulnerable early in the disease, the evolution of new imaging techniques, largely thanks to Alf Dubra and Vivek Srinivasan's uh, work in, the, in those areas, and the ability to image retinal ganglion cells and their component parts, like their axons, which degenerate very early in glaucoma, being able to image them in the human eye at high enough resolution to use the presence of those markers, in this case, the presence of axons and some of the shipment of different protein cargo and other things that are important for the ganglion cell health, to monitor those as a way to understand whether or not ganglion cells are healthy or not, or getting sicker or not. So that's been a tremendous advance. And then we've also started to move into clinical trials. Yeah, we've made great progress in the virtual reality stimulation of ganglion cells area. So we built a virtual reality environment in which patients can put on the headset and forage through um, environments that are fairly pleasant, which we think will make them actually want to do the stimulation, which is important. Um, this is, so this is a kind of an art gallery of sorts in which the patient forages to look at different paintings and at each painting is receiving stimulation in the form of little bubbles. It looks like little bubbles. Eventually the, the paintings emerge, but uh, the little bubbles, as, as we call them, are stimulating specific types of retinal ganglion cells in very specific ways, which is necessary, we know from other studies, to encourage their ongoing health by transmitting electrical signals down their axons to the brain. And we're excited to then implement the imaging tools that ALF and Vivek have developed in order to assay to what extent this visual stimulation in virtual reality is helping improve the structural biomarkers of retinal ganglion cell health um, that are measured by imaging. So by the end of 2018, we, we intend to have the results of these studies and we are tremendously excited. I get email after email after email from people who are interested in being subjects. So subject recruitment is not gonna be an issue. Um, and you know, we don't know what the outcome is gonna be, of course, we don't get to decide that, but we are certain that we're already learning and are gonna to continue to learn some extremely valuable information for the diagnosis, treatment, and perhaps even reversal of glaucoma symptoms. Without the CFC collaboration, my lab couldn't have worked on glaucoma. We could have sought federal funding to do that. So it wasn't a total impossibility, but in this current funding climate, in order to get federal funding, you already have to essentially have a good deal of the data. It's very hard to transition into new areas if you don't already have um, expertise in those areas. So the CFC funding made it possible for me to transition half my laboratory into the study of glaucoma and neural repair and ganglion cell repair and regeneration. It's allowed me to interface with clinicians and people in the state-of-the-art imaging world that sure I could have met at meetings but I don't think I could have aligned forces with as readily as we have with CFC. And it's allowed us to move from animal studies to clinical trials within less than a year of the publication of the animal study, which as far as I know is unprecedented and extremely exciting. So we can honestly say that we're moving straight from the lab bench to the clinic and we're doing this in a very dedicated and of course careful way. We, you know, safety is always going to be put first. But this sort of thing of aligning four labs along a common theme, a common goal, bringing in multiple techniques, multiple lines of expertise, and really making what I think are significant strides towards an important biological and clinical problem that could have only happened with this kind of CFC initiative. It's been wonderful to be a part of. We're absolutely closer to a cure than we were five years ago. We understand far more about the biology of retinal ganglion cells in glaucoma, which ganglion cells degenerate early. We can use that and are using that as an inroad into understanding the molecular basis of that vulnerability because ultimately glaucoma is a vulnerability to pressure and not necessarily um, due to pressure level per se. That's important. We've clearly made great advances in terms of being able to monitor the health of retinal ganglion cells in the intact human eye. And that's extremely important because any treatment that's going to come along has to be measured. How well is some something is working to improve conditions in glaucoma has to be assayed in a way that's very sensitive. The imaging tools have done that. And then 
Of course, we don't know the outcome of the virtual reality stimulation studies yet, but we like to think that the study that we're now conducting and studies like it from people outside the CFC are raising the conversation and are raising the, the importance of neural activity in retinal ganglion cells as a way to both keep ganglion cells alive and perhaps even to, to bring back some that are really on the brink of dying. So, you know, we don't have a, a bottled cure at the moment, but I'm confident that within the next five years, we're gonna have significantly improved treatments for glaucoma.